My name is Lee Sullivan Berry. I'm a program assistant in the oral history program here at the Chemical Heritage Foundation. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the role of forensic science in the golden age of British detective fiction. Well, the golden age of British detective fiction is really essentially um, contemporaneous with the period that Agatha Christie was writing, I think, in general, from, from the 20s through to the late 50s. These are very orderly worlds which are disrupted by a crime that then our, our ideal hero can come in and solve and set, set things back to right. So it's a small British village or, um, or a workplace in London that you know this thunderclap has struck in the form of this murder. Um, and there is a sense that it is possible to, to, to solve it, to solve it with brain power. <laughs> um, and often that means with the application of, of scientific detective methods. Well, it's interesting because as I read more about, um, about some of the advances in forensic chemistry in reality, you can see some of the differences um, where an author has to take some liberties. For example, um, the Marsh test for arsenic was developed in the 19th century, um, and it was pretty old technology by the time Agatha Christie and Dorothy Sayers were writing. And yet, um, there's a scene in one of Dorothy Sayers' novels in which the detective Lord Peter and his manservant Bunter perform the Marsh test in their own little, you know, sort of private work, work room. Um, and in reality, this probably would have been quite difficult. Um, the Marsh test was not uh, the most accurate at this point, and it was probably not the sort of thing that a couple of, of hobbyists uh, could have carried out with, with real accuracy. Yet, the fact that she's you know, employing this, it is based on reality in the sense that, that this is an actual test for arsenic. It seems to conform generally to how that test would have been carried out. They get the kind of results. So she's, she's specific. She knows what she's writing about. If you think about Sherlock Holmes as sort of the, the prototype of the scientific detective, a, a dabbler in um, in forensic chemistry, in document analysis, in handwriting analysis, in all of these different sort of spheres of, of scientific endeavor that could be applied to the solving of crimes. People came to see scientific experts as, as in some sense, clinchers of the case. Um, that scientific testimony was very important. And when you think about Alfred Swain Taylor, who was a big forensic e expert who testified in many of the notable British trials that I talked about, um, there, there was criticism of him at the time that he was perhaps over-determining his scientific results, that he, he was testifying with a degree of certainty that maybe the science at the time was not capable of delivering. And I think that kind of goes back to why some of these golden age detective fictions are, or detective novels, are so comfortable to read. Because there is that sense that, that the truth is ultimately going to be knowable, be proven, there will be a confession, there will be, you know, there will be a resolution. And I think that much as readers look for that, or certain kind of readers do anyway, um, jurors probably do as well.